Now, my thesis was that if you listen to what black people are singing religiously or otherwise, it's a clue as to what is happening to them sociologically. So wherever there was a crisis in black people's sociology, the music reflected it. Now, for the sake of uh, analysis, at emancipation, black people's music took two main roots. The people who kept faith sang the music as it developed. The people who lost faith start singing another kind of music. Those who kept the faith, the spirituals, were adapted to the meter music, and we created what is known as black meter music. That music put its imprimatur on the Euro-American hymns as we came into the period of literacy around the turn of the century. Having the confidence of influencing that music, then we created our own gospel, that is our stylistic form of music with the liberality of feeling the spirit. And then in the 50s and 60s, uh, borrowing from other forms of music, we created what is now known as modern gospel. Now, I need you to hold a peg right there while I go back and trace this other music. The people who lost faith start singing the blues. And some people are singing the blues right until the present day. Blues spun off ragtime. Ragtime spun off jazz, and jazz went through several changes. Dance jazz, mod, uh, New Orleans jazz, modern jazz, and cool jazz. Now, you will see that jazz and blues cross-fertilized each other and produced a phenomena at the height of the 50s called rhythm and blues. Now, if you listen carefully to the beat of rhythm and blues, it is identical to the beat of modern gospel, which brings you quickly to the conclusion that the same beat that black folks dance to on Saturday night is the same beat we shout to on Sunday morning. <laughs> now, if you pull into a situation and you hear the beat and you don't know what the program is, I tell people, watch the direction of the shout. If it's up and down, it's religious. If it's from side to side, it's secular. When I was about three-fifths of the way through my study, I had picked out for my track the spirituals, black meter music, hymns of improvisation, historic gospel, and modern gospel. Uh, but about three-fifths of the way through, I discovered there was another identifiable form of black sacred music that was always around but was not written down anywhere. And for the sake of giving it a name, I call it prayer and praise songs because they were used in those pre-prayer services held before the formal service. Now they're across somewhere between the spirituals, they have that repetitive quality, and the medium music because they picked up that bright imagery. For instance, you don't know what the Lord told me. You don't know what the Lord told me. Wasn't there. You don't know when and you don't know when. You don't know what the law told me. I was praying when the law told me. I was praying when the law told me. Oh, you don't know. You wasn't there. You don't know when and you don't know when. You don't know. What the Lord told me. Now that's just one. Or if I started singing, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Tell him on the main line. If you want more power, tell him what you want. If you want more power, tell him what you want. If you want more power, tell him what you want. Jesus on the name now. So you get a hold of one of those old numbers, you can just go on singing for three or four days. Amen.
by the turn of the century, 1900, in just one generation, 10 in 20 freed men could read and write. And that had a curious impact on our religious worship. It introduced the hymn book into black worship services. And here we were, a generation from slavery trying to sing from the hymn book within the print-oriented strictures of the Protestant hymn form, eight bars to the stanza and eight bars to the verse. The effect that it had was it drained all of the emotion out of our services. At about the same time, the Lateran movement struck on Azusa Street in Los Angeles in California. The Pentecostal movement among black people began to flower. And black Methodists and Baptists in droves left Methodist and Baptist churches going over to the Pentecostal church where them folks are beating on them tambourines and cymbals and the drums, keeping the spirit in the service. And we owe a great debt to black Pentecostalism for keeping alive our musical idiom until we came back to our senses around the end of World War I and reclaimed our own heritage.